Well, it's good to be with you again this week, and I uh, want to share with you today from one of my favorite chapters in all of the Bible, Romans chapter 8. You know, I've watched a lot of people lately that with this COVID-19 and and all the talk and the political unrest and everything that's going on, they feel so isolated. They feel like they're all by themselves and don't know what to do to to take care or to try to deal with situations. And so today I just want to take us through a passage of Scripture and let the Scripture itself speak to us. I'm just going to mention a few things about it. Uh, But I want you to hear these words of Scripture from Romans chapter 8, verse 31. It asks this question, What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is it that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That very first verse, verse 31, says, If God is for us, who can be against us? That little word, if, is sure a big word. By its presence, we see that it's possible to not only live with God being for us, but it's possible to live on a side or a scale or a a position where God is against us. I want to make sure that the if stands for God being for me. But if God is for us, what are some benefits? What are some things? What is Paul writing to the Romans and trying to get them to to comprehend? I believe the first thing he's saying to us is, if God is for us, our heart's desires will not be misunderstood. He can look deep into our heart When it says that Jesus is interceding for us, it means that he is is speaking to the Father on our behalf and clarifying our thoughts and our intents and our positions. I remember when I was growing up being a teenager, and I had a man in my church that told me he was going to be my intercessor. He was going to talk to God on my behalf every day, and he did. Intercession is really important when you yourself are not sure what to think, when you're confused about issues. There's a lot of times I realize that if God is for us, one of the best things I can do is sit silently in his presence and let the Lord God Let Jesus himself intercede for me and take my thoughts and my heart and and share it with the Father because there'll be no misunderstanding. In verse 26, it says, In the same way the Spirit helps our weaknesses, 
We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that that words cannot express. Sometimes the best prayer time is the prayer time where we realize that God is for us and we let his Spirit, through the blood of the Son, intercede for us and call out our name and translate our feelings and emotions to the heart of the Father. But if God is for us, I also believe there's protection in the hand of the Lord. I remember many years ago reading a story about a British Columbia missionary. He was out in a very isolated community, a shanty town, so to speak, and he was holding a camp meeting. In the middle of one of the services, a drunken cowboy came riding his horse right down the center aisle toward the missionary. He was in a headlong gallop. No one there understood or knew that the missionary cried out to God for help. And it flashed from his heart a split-second decision, Lord, you are able to protect me. If you permit that horse and rider to run me down, thy will be done. I know you are for me. The horse came down that center aisle, lunged toward the missionary, and right as he got just one step away, he reared up on his hind legs, and he had fright in his eyes, and he turned, and the cowboy uh, rode him out, and then he He rode him back in and did the same thing, and the horse responded the same way. That happened three times before the cowboy realized that the missionary was not going to get run down, and he was going to stand and preach no matter what that cowboy did. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that in all things God works for good, for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. I don't know about you, but that verse has really encouraged me many, many times. It doesn't say everything I face is good. It says that everything in God's hands, everything, all things work, all things God works and turns it around for good. I've seen that happen so many times in my own life where he simply stepped in and and did the right and, and did what needed to be done to make it a positive situation. I remember reading about uh, Dr. A. A. Hodge uh, telling about the great Dr. Witherspoon, a Presbyterian clergyman in the 18th century. And one day a man rushed into his office and said, oh, Dr. Witherspoon, you've got to help me thank God. I was going down this mountain to Princeton, and as I was going along, I lost control in the buggy, and the horse went over the embankment and rolled, and yet I was not hurt. And Dr. Witherspoon looked at him and kind of smiled dryly and said to him, I can tell you something that's 10,000 times more providential than that. I've been down that mountain with my buggy hundreds of times. I've never lost control. My horse has never run away, and I've rode safely into town. And I thank God for it every day. One of the things we do sometimes as Christians is we forget to thank God for the providence of an everyday blessing, for his protection in all things, for the way he turns things for good that are really what appear to be a negative. I say to you today another reason if God is for us, no person or power can separate us from God. This past week, I did a couple of funerals, and one of the most encouraging things I could share with the people who are experiencing the loss of 
Both of these were young people. The most encouraging thing I could share with them is that God has given you the right to choose and he has tied positive consequences onto good choices. And if you choose to ignore those and make wrong choices, you're going to have negative consequences. And then I shared with them that God in his power has decided that he would never take away our ability to make those choices. And what's more, he won't let Satan take away the ability to make those choices either. Now Satan may try all kinds of things to get us to think that we can be separated from God without having to make a choice, that other people can do that to us. But verse 37 tells us that we are, no, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. More than a victor. More than a winner. More than a conqueror. With God at our side, and if God is for us, we can make it. I know there's some of you that just think you're about the end of your rope. I'm telling you, God is for you, and if God is for you, you can make it. You can't be separated from him on the whim of the enemy or by somebody else's actions or choices. You can make it. I think about the eagle. I love watching bald eagles and so it was, I, I was able to watch one out where we live in Lake Manawa, the top of an old dead tree. A storm was coming up, and the wind was picking up, and I watched that eagle turn and stick his chest into the wind. And the lightning began to flash, and the wind was blowing, and, and uh, I believe the rain was coming. And when that in when the wind got in it in its greatest intensity, that eagle stuck out his chest, spread his wings, and let the wind carry him way up in the sky to where I could hardly see him anymore. He had taken the adversity of the storm and used it to propel him to new heights and to to the to where I could not even see him. I believe that's what God does for us. If God is for us, we can take the storms. We can't explain it, but he turns them around for good, and we can be more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ. Because Paul wrote to the Romans, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor the future nor any powers, Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If God is for us, who can be against us? But Paul also reminds the Romans that nothing can separate us from the love of God. He's going to love us and keep us and help us in all that we do. If God is for us, who can be against us? Nobody. Nobody at all. God can give us the victory in every situation of life. He can turn it around for good if you'll let him. God loves you. He doesn't want you to be depressed and discouraged and defeated. Through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have the victory and you've been made more than a conqueror. Perhaps it's time to get up, get busy, and let the words of Romans chapter 8 encourage your heart, touch others with the good news of the gospel, and by your victory, remind people that nothing can separate you from the love of God. 
I hope you have a great week. Don't let the enemy beat you up and beat you down. God loves you, and he's for you. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for interceding for us. Lord, I just feel like there's some out there that may be watching this video that are going through some tough times. I just hope they know that you can take their thoughts and desires, the depths of their heart, and by your Spirit, communicate to the Father clearly without misunderstanding. You can protect their lives from whatever comes against them. And you can help them to ride on the winds uh, of tribulation or sorrow or anything else. Lord, I pray that we would not just read the words that we're more than conquerors through him that loved us, but that we would live the words of Romans chapter 8. Bless each one that's watching. Be with them through this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.